Shalom. Kol Laila Yahweh. Bahashem Yahweh Shai. Bahashem Rakat Kadash. All praises be to the Most High, Yahweh, in the name of His Son and our Lord and Savior, Yahweh Shai. Much respect and honor to the brothers that are doing the work in truth and sincerity, risking their lives and freedom to do so, pushing this gospel throughout the four corners of the earth. Salutations to the hopeful elect that are scattered abroad, and double line of respect to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone. Coming back at you with another lesson, a change is coming. So I want to talk about the promises that's been promised to Jacob, the Israelites, which is going to be the elect in these last days. So part of that promise is a major change that's going to take place through the spirit and power of Yahweh B'Hashem Yahweh Shai. So when you look at what's happening in the secular world, you got programs like government programs like DARPA that's creating super soldiers. China has a super soldier program along with America. And they have taken highly trained special operations forces like Delta Force, Green Beret, Navy SEALs, and merged them with machine and have created in the modern term of the word, mighty men. <clears throat> so I want to go here. So whenever you look at what's happening on the left-hand side, there's a right-hand movement that is mirroring the other hand. And the same thing can be said about whatever is happening on the right hand. The left hand is mirroring that movement or that action because the most high moves in twos or duality left and right good and evil so he has a perfect balance and the right hand of the men of the tabernacle of david is being changed mentally first through the word but the lord is going to turn up his spirit and his faithful men. Let's go here first. One moment. Okay, I want to go to the book of Isaiah. Wow, that's a perfect title. Israel or Yasharala, stay encouraged. Isaiah 41 and 1. Keep silence before me, O islands. And let the people renew their strength. Let them come near. Then let them speak. Let us come near together to judgment. This is beautiful. So when the Most High renders judgment, he uses people, places, and things. Everything is at his disposal. Everything. Matter of fact, let's go here to... Revelation, yeah, Revelation 4, <clears throat> Revelation 4, verse 11, Thou art worthy, O Lord, to receive glory and honor and power, for Thou hast created all things, and for Thy pleasure they are and were created. So the Most High is going to make the creature his weapon. And the men of the tabernacle of David are going to be weaponized and become walking machinations of war. So we don't need the physical science to be strengthened, merge with machine through AI and robotics artificial intelligence because we have our power that is going to come naturally to the Lord's inheritance, Jacob. 
Wisdom of Solomon 15. Let's go to verse 16. For man made them, and he that borrowed his own spirit fashioned them. But no man can make a God like unto himself. So we have the great architect of the universe, the great creator, Yahweh. He is. That is above the gods of the nations, these heathen. But they're trying to replicate what they were not given inherently by being the Lord's chosen. Let's go to verse 17. For being mortal, he worketh a dead thing with wicked hands. For he himself is better than the things which he worshiped, whereas he lived once, but they never. So I didn't mean to go there, but the Spirit brought me there, so it's all good. Let's go to Wisdom of Solomon 5. Let's go to verse 16. Therefore shall they receive a glorious kingdom and a beautiful crown from the Lord's hand. For with his right hand shall he cover them, and with his arm shall he protect them. So Shai is going to ignite the switch in his men that are following him in this doctrine. Verse 17, he shall take to him his jealousy for complete armor and make the creature his weapon for the revenge of his enemies. So this change is going to take place through the Lord's spirit that created all things, which is Yahweh Shai. He is a incarnate, a reflection of the Most High, an embodiment of wisdom and power and strength and might. So when we believe in that, then we're able to take part in it. <clears throat> Let's go to Colossians 1. See, Colossians 1, verse 15. Who is the image of the invisible God the firstborn of every creature. That's Yahweh Shai. For by him were all things created that are in heaven and that are in earth, visible and invisible, whether they be thrones or dominions or principalities or powers. All things were created by him and for him, even powers. So the men of the Lord the mighty men of the house of David are going to be able to control and manipulate and move the elements. So there are spirits behind everything that has matter. So when you look at what the magicians do on the left-hand side, they're communing with left-hand side spirits. So the men of the Lord is going to have this power over everything that was created, principalities, dominions, powers, to work on our behalf, to cast out demons, to make things materialize that were invisible, to make those things visible. So the elements are going to be at our command, if you will. <clears throat> Let's go here. Wow. The Spirit took me there just from reading Isaiah 41 and 1. Keep silence before me, O islands, and let the people renew their strength. Let them come near, then let them speak. Let us come near together to judgment. See, so the creature of the Most High, his mighty men, the battle axe, is going to execute judgment on the nations. Let's look up this word renew in the Hebrew. Did not mean to rhyme, but it did. I'm going to look up the word renew. Looks like collapse. 
Kalop. Let's see. Renew comes from the Hebrew Kalop, which means to pass on, to spring up, to pierce, to change. So we're going to be changed with a renewed, re-energized strength, charged or supercharged. Wow. To spring up, pierce, change, to grow up, to renew, to strike through. So the men of the Lord is going to be able to strike through kings under the leadership of our Lord and Savior, Yahweh Shai. <laughs> this is beautiful. To strike through. Wow. Let's go to cheer for the prostrate Zion. Isaiah 52, verse 1. Awake, awake, put on thy strength, O Zion. Put on thy beautiful garments, O Jerusalem, the holy city. For henceforth there shall no more come into thee the uncircumcised and the unclean. So the Israelites will never be brought back down to the dust of confusion or the dust of the earth any more. No more. Because of that change. First of all, the Lord's spirit is going to be turned up, full throttle. So Adawan Ratiza, I'm amongst that number. We're going to absorb the full power that's been promised and given from on high. As in the days of old, the mighty men of the house of David. See, verse 2. Shake thyself from the dust, arise and sit down. O Jerusalem, loose thyself from the bands of thy neck, O captive daughter of Zion. So part of those bands are these fleshly bodies. We're under the bondage of the flesh and sin. A habitation of sin is bondage. And I want to look up this word here. <clears throat> Strength. Let's look that up in the Hebrew. So we're waking up through the doctrine, through this truth, which plants the seed of a full-blown God-like blossom to occur. We don't need DARPA and scientific advanced technologies. We have the Holy Spirit, the water Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai. By Shem or Kakadash. Let's look up this word strength. And it looks like us. Us. Comes from the Hebrew. Us. Force. Majesty. Praise. Boldness. Might. Loud. So right now. The men of the Lord are already exhibiting lower vibrations of this bite. Force. Cry aloud. Spare none. Lift up thy voice like a trumpet. So the doctrine is right now coming out or emitting at a lower level frequency. But the Lord is going to turn it up through his spirit to help cause this change in his men, followed by the remnant. See? Might, strength, material or physical, personal, social, or political. These are the new governors putting on that full strength, the new leadership hierarchy or chain of command. That's going to rule over the nations and never be taken down again. So this is a Davidic dynasty on steroids. Let's keep it moving. I'm trying to go fast. Let's go here. First Corinthians 2 and 5. Let's go to 4. 
and my speech and my preaching was not with enticing words of man's wisdom, but in demonstration of the spirit and of power. So being able to interpret the scriptures is a demonstration of power. Knowledge is power, but the Lord is going to elevate that to fully manifest in his chosen inheritance, his faithful. See, that faith materializes to power because the Lord makes intercession with us or connection with us. 1 Corinthians 2 and 5, see, that your faith should not stand in the wisdom of men, but in the power of God. That's beautiful. So this is how we are made perfect. The Lord moves and is turned on by our faith. It activates the angels to move on our behalf, to manipulate things in the universe. And right now, that is moving or winning the minds and souls of the elect. <clears throat> Howbeit, we speak wisdom among them that are perfect, yet not the wisdom of this world, nor of the princes of this world that come to naught. So the wisdom of this world is foolishness to the Most High. Yahweh by Hashem, Yahweh Shai. We don't need to be linked in to machine to gain strength and power. If we wait on him in our faith, we're going to be able to take part in that power and be infused with pure energy and fire on the inside. Matter of fact, let's go here. They that wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. They that wait on the Lord, let's go to Isaiah 40. Isaiah chapter 40. Let's go here to verse 28. Hast thou not known, hast thou not heard that the everlasting God, the Lord, the creator of the ends of the earth, fainteth not, neither is weary, there is no searching of his understanding. See? So who have believed our report? So no man can fully be able to explain or articulate the full manifold power of the Most High. But we're able to get a portion, some of that power, as the sons of God, pursuant to Psalms 82. Hast thou not known, hast thou not heard that the everlasting God, the Lord, the creator of the ends of the earth, fainteth not, neither is weary? There is no searching of his understanding. And this is why we have to be plugged in to Yahweh Shai and have the mind of Yahweh Shai, pursuant to 1 Corinthians 2, the last scripture there. He giveth power to the faint. And to them that have no might, he increaseth strength. So this is how the men of the house of David are going to evolve into mighty men in a moment, in the twinkling of an eye at the last trump. What last trump? The end of the sixth going into the beginning of the seventh trump. Even the youths shall faint and be weary, and the young men shall utterly fall. But they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. So the Vatican have records of our forefathers doing mighty works, leaping tall walls, punching through walls, bending iron, causing fire to come down from the skies. They have the records, and this is why they're scared. 
moving with urgency. The Bible says the devil is condemned unto you having great wrath, for he knoweth that he hath a short time. Woe unto the inhabitants of the earth. So this man is going to unleash robotic dogs armed with explosives, rapid machine gun fire, emitting poisonous gas and smoke, you name it. So we're going to need spiritual intervention. Let's go to Joshua 23. Joshua 23, verse 7. We got to go up to verse 6. Be ye therefore very courageous to keep and to do all that is written in the book of the law of Moses, that ye turn not aside therefore to the right hand or to the left. The straight and narrow path is through this, these teachings. Verse 7, that ye come not among these nations, these that remain among you, neither make mention of the name of their gods, nor cause to swear by them, neither serve them, nor bow yourselves unto them. So King Solomon made spiritual marriages with them to their gods, which is spiritual fornication or adultery. Let's go to verse 8. But cleave unto the Lord your God, as ye have done unto this day. So the same men that were faithful under Moses and Joshua are the same men teaching diligently today. Regenerated spirits. And there's something else I wanted to say that caught my eye. I lost my train of thought. Let's go to verse 9. For the Lord have driven out from you. Verse 9. For the Lord have driven out from before you great nations and strong. But as for you, no man have been able to stand before you unto this day. The Lord has created the walls of Jerusalem, his elect that are being rebuilt. A brazen wall that is impenetrable cannot be torn down. The mighty men or the walls of the Lord's temple are being built right now. Lively stones that are spoken of in 1 Peter 2. Verse 10, one man of you shall chase a thousand for the Lord your God. He it is that fighteth for you as he have promised you. So the new bodies are part of the promises. As the most high ever lie in the Bible, hills to the nizzo, to the capital hills to the no, to the exponential hell no. So these promises are. He's going to deliver on his promises. Everyone that have tried to disprove the Bible have fumbled and tripped and fell and made a total ass out of themselves. Every last one of them. <clears throat> so these are part of the promises. New bodies, mighty men, as in the days of old. And these men are already exhibiting boldness and might and strength and power through the proper teaching of the doctrine and blossoming with wisdom. Let's keep it moving. My voice is drying out. <clears throat> See, let's go to First Chronicles 12 and 21. First Chronicles 12. Okay, you got to go ahead and read this on your own because the Lord is going to summon up or muster the host of the battle again in these last days. So whenever we read about hosts, it's not talking about a cupcake group or a bakery team. It's talking about the armies of Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai. Let's go to First Chronicles 12 and 21. And they helped David against the band of the rovers. For they were all mighty men of valor, 
and were captains in the host. So the Lord is standing up an exceeding great army pursuant to the book of Ezekiel 37. Again, what has been will be again pursuant to Ecclesiastes 1. What in the world is a rover? Let's look it up. <laughs> rover. moment. Okay. It's a lock you. Verse 21. Rover doesn't spell it out. Uh -uh. Mighty men, captains. Well, let's look this up. In the host. In the host. And this is heavy. Watch this. Army, company, Warfare, waiting upon. So these men have faith and are not fearful or double-minded. Where's that word I'm looking for here? There's something else in here. Hardship. Wow. So these men are rugged, battle-hardened, tried, tested, and proven, organized for war. <clears throat> Look at this. Hosts of angels. Now I'm going to get to that scripture that automatically it should come into our mind at the seeing this. Hosts of angels. War, warfare, service. Wow. You already know what scripture I'm thinking about. Soldiers. So enduring a Enduring hardship as a good soldier. Endure goes back to strength, sustainment, durability, bend but don't break. So notice we saw angels. See? So these men are going to be changed and made like the host of angels. We got to keep that in mind. Let's go to 2 Samuel 7, verse 26. And let thy name be magnified forever, saying, The Lord of hosts is the God over Israel, and let the house of thy servant David be established before thee. So this is happening now. And King Solomon, that was promised to rule forever, is coming back to fulfill that prophecy in the last days. Now, he's coming back as Yahweh Shai. Prophesied. <clears throat> Let's look up host. So the Lord of hosts. Host. Looks like Sabah. Sabah. Yep. Sabah. Battle, army, soldiers, service. See? There it is again. Of the angels. An organized army. So the mighty men of the house of David are going to be fashioned into walking machinations of war. Super soldiers. <clears throat> Through the spirit and power of our Lord, Yahweh Bahashem Yahweh Shai. Not DARPA and Department of Energy and General Motors and Robotics and Technologies. Or advanced technologies. See, this is what I was thinking about right here. Watch this. Zechariah 12, verse 2. We got to go all the way up. The burden of the word of the Lord for Israel, saith the Lord, which stretcheth forth the heavens and layeth the foundation of the earth and formeth the spirit of man within him. Scientists unto this day don't understand. <laughs> Excuse me, some like it. My voice is dry. I got to hurry it up. Even unto this day, scientists cannot explain or break down the origin and the spirit being sent into a body. They can't even put a spirit into a body. <clears throat> A 
the Most High does that. Behold, I will make Jerusalem a cup of trembling unto all the people round about when they shall be in the siege both against Judah and against Jerusalem. So these nations are going to make their move to come against the Lord's sovereign nation, sovereign people that at one time was not a people, but are now re-signing the Constitution, which is coming back to this word, a word of promise. So he's going to protect sovereign territory, the faithful city, his elect. <clears throat> and in that day, let's go back to two, behold, I will make Jerusalem a cup of trembling unto all the people round about when they shall be in siege both against Judah and against Jerusalem. So he's going to bend the bow of Judah and shoot forth. Before I butcher it, let's just go to it. And I have bent the bow. I love that scripture. Zechariah 9. <clears throat> Zechariah 9. Yeah, it should be this chapter right here. Yeah, here we go. Zechariah 9 and 12. Turn you to the stronghold, ye prisoners of hope. Even today do I declare that I will render double unto thee. So the Lord is going to deliver on his promises through his right arm. The deliverer, Yahweh Shai, our king. Verse 13. When I have bent Judah for me, Fill the bow with Ephraim and raise up thy sons, O Zion, against thy sons, O Greece, and made thee as the sword of a mighty man. See? So the tabernacle of David is being reinstated and it's going to be strengthened through the power from the fourth dimension, the third heaven, that no scientist can conjure together or create in a laboratory somewhere. So these are the mighty men of the house of David being strengthened. <coughs> when I have bent Judah for me, filled the bow with Ephraim and raised up thy sons, O Zion, against thy sons, O Greece, and made thee as the sword of a mighty man. See? So Yahweh Shai is going to spearhead this effort. The northern and southern kingdom are going to comprise the tabernacle of David. That's all 12 tribes from both kingdoms, northern and southern kingdoms. The governmental platform being established, entering into the kingdom to come. So when we read hosts, angels, even the mighty men of David are likened unto the angels after the Lord apportions out that power. <clears throat> Zechariah 12. Where did we leave off? Yeah, see, I spoke about the governess. Let's go to verse 4. In that day, saith the Lord, I will smite every horse with astonishment and his rider with madness. And I will open my eyes upon the house of Judah and will smite every horse of the people with blindness. So these components, these forces of the other nations are going to be dismantled, beat down, brought to nothing. <clears throat> Let's go to verse five. And the governors of Judah shall say in their heart, the inhabitants of Jerusalem shall be my strength 
and the Lord of hosts, their God. See, the Lord is mustering the host of the battle. He is bringing strength to the weak, to the downtrodden, to the oppressed. <clears throat> so really, the elect men are rich, wealthy, and have access to the Lord's will, his wisdom, through Yahweh Shai, which equates to power that is built on our faith. And that day will I make the governors of Judah like a hearth of fire among the wood and like a torch of the fire in a sheaf. And they shall devour all the people round about, all the other nations outside of the elect of the house of Israel. Every one of them shall be as nothing. Doesn't mean they're not going to exist. It means they're going to be at the bottom of the kingdom to come under the tabernacle of David, elect. So these nations are going to be swallowed up and put into slavery. And the governors of Judah shall say in their heart, the inhabitants of Jerusalem shall be my strength in the Lord of hosts, their God. In that day will I make the governors of Judah like a hearth of fire among the wood and like a torch of fire in a sheath. And they shall devour all the people round about on the right hand and on the left. And Jerusalem shall be inhabited again in her own place, even in Jerusalem. So these are part of the promises, not only spiritual power, and becoming mighty, but also obtaining the promise, holy lands. <clears throat> Verse seven, the Lord also shall save the tents of Judah first, that the glory of the house of David and the glory of the inhabitants of Jerusalem do not magnify themselves against Judah. So the scepter does not depart out of the Lord's chief tribe, which Shai is out of. Well, he's ruling, occupying that throne of David, and he is of the tribe of Judah. That's going to rule over all the tribes of the throne of David. But these other nations are going to be set back in their order, which starts with the house of David, followed by the remnant of all the tribes together as one nation, no longer divided as northern and southern kingdom. But the nations are going to know their lot in the hierarchy or the new holy mountain. Let's get to the key point. <clears throat> Verse 8. In that day shall the Lord defend the inhabitants of Jerusalem and he that is feeble among them in that day shall be as David. And the house of David shall be as God, as the angel of the Lord before them, as the angel of the Lord before them. So the men are going to take on that similar power as Yahweh Shai and be made like him as the Most High to demonstrate his power on the earth through his witnesses, elect men, or sons of God, Yasha Allah, or Yasha Allah, Yasha Allah. We read that. <clears throat> we read it as to what happened in the old days. It was, in, it was right here. See? See? First Chronicles 12 and 21. And they helped David against the band of the rovers, for they were all mighty men of valor and were captains in the host. Remember, we looked up host. And I'll close out here. Sabah. Sabah. 
which is, look at that, of the angels. So these are men donning the new bodies, putting on the new breastplates of righteousness, which started with faithfully teaching the true full doctrine. So are going to obtain the full spirit of power from on high. The water, Yahweh by Hashem, Yahweh Shai. Barakatha Yahweh, Barakatha Yahweh Shai. Call him Lamb, Yahweh by Hashem, Yahweh Shai. By Hashem, Kadash. Hopefully, this lesson has been edified. So, I was getting ready to go to Jeremiah 30 and Daniel 12, but through the Holy Spirit, I, I think, or oh, hopefully, Lord willing, or oh, Adawan Rathazah, the lesson was a lesson of edification and clarification for the Lord's elect. I don't want to write this out, oh Lord willing, Bukasha, please. So, Kwam Yasharala, rise, Israel, rise, and abide the ball. Destruction to Babylon. See you on the next lesson, Lord willing. We got next, Lord willing. Baraka Thumb, listen to you all. And Shalom, peace be unto you. Shalom.